Today we're spending some time sharing our staff favorite websites with you. Now they may not be the newest website created, but they are some of the most useful. Just looked at PageFlakes, now I want to show you IMDB, the Internet Movie Database, a site that is a staple in my house. It is the ultimate movie and TV companion, and the place most people turn solving those disputes of what actor was in what movie. IMDB is an incredibly popular site. About 42 million people visit it every month, and the reason they visit it is to find out about new movies, new TV shows coming out, to find out the latest gossip, to get reviews, and to do research. And that's where I end up using it the most. Typically what happens is I'm watching a show and I recognize an actor, but it's going to drive me crazy for the rest of the show trying to figure out where I recognize that actor from because I can't remember. Happened to me the other night watching Deadwood. So instead of scratching my brain the whole time, I just open up IMDB, type Deadwood into the search field, and then I can go and I can search. It brings up all the results of Deadwood. It's got a very intelligent search engine, but the one that I want to look at is the TV series. And here I've got, this is the series. Look, it's got all these great photos of the series, a description of the TV series. It's all fine and good, but I want the cast list. I don't want to wait till the end of the show. And there it is. The actor that I wanted to know about is this guy, Ian McShane. He plays a wonderful bad guy in the piece who's named Al Swearingen, but his voice is what was driving me crazy. I recognized his voice, and I didn't know where from. So I come to the site, click on Ian McShane, and now I'm brought into this great biography, all of his information, where he was born, his birth date, photos of the different films that he was in, and publicity shots. And as I scroll down, why did I recognize his voice? because he's a voiceover artist. Look, he's in the upcoming Kung Fu Panda as a voiceover artist. Down a little bit, he's going to be in the new Shrek when it's released. I like Shrek. And here's his Deadwood credit. He's in the currently released We Are Marshall. So now I'm getting a feel for where I recognize this guy from. And as I scroll through, this is where you start ending up wasting tremendous amounts of time in this site. But it is time well wasted, I can assure you. Because you start clicking on different sites. As I look through, I remember this TV series way back, War and Remembrance. I read the book by Herman and Wook, I like the miniseries. I don't remember that he was in it. What did he play in it? So let's take a look. Oh, there he is, Ian McShane here. Look at that. Robert Mitchum, I remember. Oh, Sharon Stone was in it. I didn't remember Sharon. Now you can start playing the Kevin Bacon game of degrees of separation because you start finding all these different linkages. And some of the other fun things that they have within this site, if we go back to the Deadwood site, is they've got little things like they've got all the goofs and the trivia here in the fun stuff on the left hand side. So if you want to find out where the producers made little mistakes, Deadwood is set in the Wild West and if you look here it says in episode one you actually see part of a highway and a guard railing. So that kind of thing is kind of fun, especially for fans of the show. Plus in the Deadwood case and in a lot of cases there's links to chat forums where they discuss the shows, they discuss the characters, as they discuss upcoming episodes. It is a really, really rich site. As well, you find reviews of upcoming movies, of current movies, and you find a lot of trailers all here on IMDb. Now, speaking of movies, another one of our staff favorite sites is one called Metacritic. Now, it's a site that's dedicated to all sorts of reviews on everything from music to video to games to movies. Now, the difference between Metacritic and IMDb as far as the reviews is Metacritic is dedicated exclusively to reviews. And instead of reading individual reviews, what it does is it amalgamates all the reviews that it can find and gives you a rating on each of the different properties. So you can quickly decide what you want to spend your time watching. For example, if we take a look at the current movies under release right now, Happy Feet, that's an animated one with dancing penguins. I wonder how well it's being accepted. Well, here we see uh, the critics give it 77 out of 100. It's got a green tag, which means it's generally favorable. But users, people who have watched it and then submitted their own information, only give it a 5.3 out of 10. They didn't like it as much. And you'll quite often find this kind of disparity between the two review types, where critics might like one film, the viewers don't like it as much, and that disparity is what really makes the site so compelling. You get all points of view. Current films are in the left-hand side, the ones that are under release, and the color coding tells us which ones we might want to consider. Green are the ones that are quite popular, yellow are the ones that are kind of so-so, and the red ones must miss movies, like Let's Go to Prison gets a solid 25 out of 100 from the critics. Maybe we'll wait for video, maybe we'll even pass on it once it's out in video. Now beyond movies, they also review current DVDs and existing DVDs that are out, TV shows, music, books, which I find very useful, and the game review section, which is really one of the most important game reviews out there. Manufacturers of games right now really look at the Metacritic reviews to determine how well their games are doing it, and this is the one that they like to track and make sure that they're performing well on. 
Well, Steve, you didn't ask me what my favorite website is. I apologize. What's your favorite website? <laughs> well, one of my new favorite websites is has nothing to do with movies, but it uh, deals with another hot topic, fitness and health, and it's a website called iTrain, and you can find it online at www.itrain.com. Now, it's a website that offers downloadable workouts that are designed and narrated by some of Hollywood's hottest trainers, but they make very real life workouts. Now, I find this website really motivational and helpful because you can choose a workout. They've got them listed on the side here, and there's different kinds of workouts because people have different kinds of preferences, and I download them onto my iPod. For example, I can click on Eye Strength, and then there is a short overview of the workout that mm -hmm. comes up, and as well, I can click here for a short audio sound of the workout that I'm going to be doing now, as well. Now, just to clarify, this okay, is a full audio work. package. There's no video included. It's a full uh, audio package, no video. And uh, when you purchase the workout, uh, as well, you get a downloadable PDF file. So this gives you pictures of all the different moves you're going to be doing in the workout. Which is important. So you're doing the right technique so you don't injure yourself, that kind of stuff. Exactly, which is very important. And there's also different purchase plans, which are, of course, much cheaper than hiring a personal trainer to get you in shape. Now, how does this really differ from then taking a class? Well, a lot of gyms uh, have different class schedules. And for me, for example, I work out at 5.30 in the morning. That's crazy. Well, for some people, but I like it. But my gym definitely wasn't going to be holding classes at 5.30 in the morning. So here I have available to me all different kinds of workouts downloadable to my MP3 player so that I can customize them to fit my lifestyle, my time frame. Now, one thing I know about personal trainers is one of the reasons it's interesting is they're always changing the workout. Is there yes. a lot of different workouts available? Lots of different workouts on here, and they're always adding new workouts. So someone who goes onto the iTrain site right now has the library of all the past workouts as well as all the new ones that are being added. And again, because of the boredom factor, they're changing, so they're very motivational. And it's a great way as well to expand your workouts. There you go. So that's one of your favorite websites. Yes, one of my favorite websites. For more information about any of the products we cover on the show, drop by our website at dototech.com.